actually um, another one of the CIT teachers, and he's in maths and statistics, and he's going to present about how he's actually working. Yeah. How about overlooking them? Totally. <laughs> and statistics and um, I'm coming at this from a slightly different angle although I do think uh, since I've heard the term flipped classroom it, it, it's, it's um, you know how some words or ideas trigger uh, you to focus and, and it's a good trigger it's a good word to focus on how how can I get my students uh, how can I engage them in class uh, now but I, I'm coming at it from a, probably a different angle, is that the, the problem I've had for, what is it, 25 years teaching maths, is that you, particularly the first classroom and the first subject in a series of maths classes, is that, say, you've got Year 12 uh, prerequisite on the course. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. And, and people have been writing syllabuses based on the assumption that they've got Year 12 maths. But what does that mean? So, so way back in about the mid '90s, I started teaching syllabuses where we didn't teach prerequisites, where we assumed a certain level of maths knowledge, and I and I went right back to fractions, decimals, orders of operations, and I found that half the people failed. But they didn't have the prerequisites. So, how are you going to teach? Le you know, leap into teaching algebra, assuming that they can do all this work with numbers, and they can't. You can't do it in maths. Mm. So what I've done is over years, and, and online learning is a natural resource to help you with this, is to uh, is develop materials. And I'll just show you one, uh, just a few examples is all I'm going to do. Uh, uh, yeah. Here's one that I've just done this week. It's the, it's the second uh, subject in, uh, second semester of maths in the engineering course. Um, it assumes that they've either done the subject before or they've got that prerequisite knowledge. Um, and not only that, that they still remember it. Now, I've got, in a class, I've got, uh, you know, 20% of the students have done the other subject. Uh, some have done the prerequisite maths at school maybe five, ten years ago. How much are they going to remember? So what I do is, um, all this stuff here, all the, uh, the first block there, is stuff from basically the main, the main things I think they're going to need at this, skills that they're going to need at, at, at this time from the, the uh, first subject. And, uh, and it's really basic, but, but they, you know, there's things like, um, in, in this prerequisite stuff, for example, it's just, it's just an, you know, a, an introduction to what what the skills are. Um, uh, there's a, a few. This is a, a nice little learning uh, tool that was produced uh, nationally, nationally funded, so we get to use it. It's a little uh, sort of like a, a little interactive, uh, <coughs> yeah, a little uh, sort of like a little game. Anyway, the, the point is drawing on a number of, of resources and either at right up at the start or, or at the end they can, they can self-test self themselves and, and we'll mark it and tell them how they're going. Okay, so that's, that's a way of... Uh, the, the idea is to try and let students uh, find their own pathway through the material and, and build up the knowledge that they don't have. And so there's a process of uh, first, first lesson, right? Um, we're going on to a new topic. I, 
I quickly worked out that some people knew some of this and other people uh, in various amounts, you know, and I can't, if I just started sort of telling you how to do it, the half of them would be asleep because they knew how to do it, the other half wouldn't be able to follow me, and, and probably 20% of the class would be with me. So this is, this is a way of, of trying to overcome that. So, so there's a motivating uh, set of problems there, they can, they can mouse over to see the answers when they're ready, and they can, they can and with my guidance if, if, if they like, go and find out that they, they've got to go and study some more stuff on, on a particular topic. Okay, so it's sort of navigating the material, and, I, and, and my aim is be, is be, as every student has their own learning path. Now, a natural consequence of this, uh, and I only just realised uh, sort of really clearly a few weeks ago, uh, that I'm spending more time in class helping students individually. It just happens. So, so the, the motivation for me is the individualisation and the, the flipped classroom is how it develops, how it evolves. Okay, so that's um, basically what I want to say. I just wanted to point to a few sort of things that I use. It's not all videos, but videos are useful. Um, <clears throat> Okay, now this particular subject I teach, um, I can't, this version, uh, this subject I have taught 100% online. I never see my students until the test, or some of them I never see, they're interstate. I know them, I know these people. When they come to, when I see them, I, I, I know exactly what they can do and what they can't do. And it's, and it's because of the, just how, you've got to have the resources, I guess, and, 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 and the communication with them. Um, but one of the problems I've had is that they, uh, the syllabus says that they've got to use Excel, but there's no prerequisite course in Excel, so some of them can do it, some can't. So, for example, I've got this exercise early on. Uh, where is it? Okay, this is a, you, the, 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 an exercise where they build up a spreadsheet in, in producing random samples. Right? This tells them how to do it. That's what they should end up with, something like that. It's, uh, it's tossing a coin. Uh, one is head, say zero tails, and you'll see that randomly tossing a coin after, you know, in this case, a hundred times, you get about half and half. A particular sample. Okay. Now, a lot of them can't can't do that because they don't have the prerequisites knowledge to follow those instructions. Right. Uh, I've got some question and answer, but the uh, the ones that don't have the skills. Um, there's a detailed uh, video here, and, and I don't even assume that they know how to set up uh, an e-learn versus application sort of desktop properly. So, so there's instructions on everything, everything that you need from start to finish, and uh, there's a menu here where you can you can skip things or you can just You can play it through. I, I do these in Captivate. I find it a lot easier because you can record stuff. It's, it's a compromise because you can record stuff and you can present something rough very quickly. The advantage over the, uh, the board techniques is that you can edit it. Right? You don't have to, to redo the whole thing. Uh, you can put voice over if you want to. <coughs> you can build in menus. Uh, So you can go through, you can speed them up. Uh, Captivate's got these uh, two times and four times speed things. You can, uh, you got all the control you need. You know? And that's quite, that was quite a big job. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of easier things like this little one here. Um, in theory, 95% of samples should fall within these ranges. Pressing F9 repeatedly generates new samples. Okay, so it's, well, it's better than I can do uh, 
trying to explain the answer. Because <laughs> uh, I've had time to think about it, and you've got your diagram. And once again, the, it gives the user, uh, the, the big thing for me is it gives the user control over the, uh, the, the learning completely. How, how many times they revise it, what bits they do when, and, uh, and so on. Um, just a couple of other little things, I'll, I'll just, two, two more things I want to show. Uh, where am I? I just have to remember where I put things. I've got so many things half done and all over the place. Okay, there's a, just a little explanation on standard deviation, just a, a few facts. Okay, if you, uh, here's, um, and I'll just, no, I can't speak this one up. It's just, uh, once again, giving the user control over, over, over the learning, you know, how fast you want to go, how long have you got to look at something to make sense of it. And, and the thing is, it works. Uh, this one, uh, let me just. <coughs> I just want to uh, get to this. Okay, and there's a little practice question there. And uh, I go away and calculate it. And I get it wrong. And I can get it wrong a few times, and then it'll tell me to go away and learn it again. <laughs> All right, and there's the work example at the end, setting out, and then and then if we go back, uh, if we go back, here's a couple of practice questions. See if you can do that one. All right, sets out the table, so it's you know. It's Easy to follow, isn't it? I, I, you know, I think it is. And standard deviation is something that a lot of people have trouble with. In fact, maths and statistics. <laughs> That's why I'll never be out of the job. <laughs> Even when you give them this stuff, there's going to be a lot of questions. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's about... Does anyone like to ask questions? Yes. Um, did you make that video yourself for the interactive, like with questions? Yes. Yeah. All of that. I can't get any questions. Oh, just switch the video. Um, just putting that interactive question up for questions. So I was just wondering whether you. Did yeah. All everything I've done. Was that there was, right? Yeah. Uh, and what did you use for that? No, that the question, the last one, where you just yeah. should throw up a question with the table. Um, where you had to actually answer a question and told you whether you got it right or wrong. Oh, that, no, that was within Captivate. So you did that in yeah. Captivate? Yeah. It, it's sort of, Captivate is just a, a fast way of producing Flash movies. And it's got a lot of action script built in it, just like Flash. So that's why it is. And it's just, yeah, it's just adding objects. Yeah. And you can request the software itself. And in fact, in, in fact, we've got we've got two different yeah we've got two different versions. So there, I just noticed that the, in the last week we've come in with the latest version yeah, of Captivate yeah. Six. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've got Captivate Four at home, well, and there's you can no store education anything to upgrade you on your other one on top. Uh, this is one I bought with today. I have to look and into that. You mentioned giving individual attention in class. I'm wondering what your class size. It varies. Uh, often, often they're small classes. They're uh, not forty. No, uh, I wouldn't teach a class of forty people. <laughs> no, the only way you can do that is lecture, and and you know, there's not much time to help people. So, about what class size would you find optimal? Uh, anything between five and twenty. Thank you. It's hard to find. Pretty people interested in maths. <laughs> 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 it's hard to find a class where they're hard to learn trying to get out. 
Whether I can do it or not. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> okay.